Hey guys, it's James from Facelap Gaming, and today I have another kickstart video. Now, in the last kickstart video I did, I said it was like a review and a tutorial, but it was pretty much a review. So today I'm going to try and do a complete tutorial on kickstart and how to use it in your mix. Now, I've got a basic setup going, which is just a kick at every fourth and white noise which is then having kickstart over it that comes into play every quarter note so if we listen to that now this is basically the most simple thing you can do with kickstart and it's the easiest thing to get started so i have my kick track coming into here and my white noise coming into here and all you need to do to get that effect is activate the kickstart plugin on the track you want to have the volume dipped at. Now I've put it on the white noise because I want that to be side chained and I want it to follow this automation curve at a quarter note because the difference between my drums is a quarter I want it to dip at this point so I can hear the drums more clearly which is the most popular use for side chaining. Now if I put it to half, it will dip at this first kick, then it, it will dip at this first kick, but not the second one. And then it will dip at the third one, but not the fourth. So if you listen to that now, it becomes. You can hear the difference. Now, if I go onto it again and change it to a whole, it will dip in the first one, but none of the rest, and then dip back at the first. Also, it can be done for an eighth note, which means that it will dip at the first kick and dip again in between the first and second kick, then dip at the second kick, and in between the second and third kick and so on. So it sounds like this. Now, because it is just at the fourth beat, I will just change this back to a quarter note. And I'm basically gonna explain this dial here. Now, if you listen to it at 100% in the mix, it sounds like this. Now what this dial does is basically change how prominent the sidechain effect is in the mix. So if I play with this while the track is playing, you'll be able to hear the difference. So the sidechaining effect can go from being very obvious to not obvious at all in the mix, depending on how you want it. Now Kickstart have programmed in all these different types of curves that they've drawn in. I think I said this in the last video that at some point I read in an update of the plugin, you might be able to draw your own, which would be pretty cool. But they've already plugged in these really good different side chaining automation curves and you can select one and move it to your own preferences so it's very customizable i find the curves pretty good anyway and they are very tight for the type of side chaining i want especially with the mix i can get it to sound as good as i want so if i press play on this and i change the different types of curves you'll hear the difference from where it automates it because it follows this pattern of this being low where the kick is placed and then it, the volume rises at this point. Now some of these didn't sound quite right and that's because like this one, the white noise was at its highest volume when the kick was in place and then it dipped afterwards in between kicks. So what you might want to do there is get your kick pattern 
and change it rather from the first of every fourth beat to the third, which is where this is locating a dip. So it sounds like this. So the white noise is, well, the white noise volume is put down when the kick comes into place. But I'll just put it back to the fourth. Now the problem with kickstart, you might think, is that these are all 4-4 rhythms. And whilst you find that a lot of songs are in 4-4, it's probably one of the most popular rhythms of songs ever. There is other songs that are not in 4-4 rhythm, and you don't want to have to stick to these 4-4 rhythm sidechains, which might be kind of annoying. So what have I done about this? Well, let's just put aside this setup briefly. I'm going to take away this kickstart effect on the sidechain for a moment. And I'm going to mute this drums track and bring out the other one with a sidechain track that I've done. Now the sidechain track is basically a MIDI output. I've gone into FL Studio and Channels, Import, MIDI Out. Now basically what the MIDI Out is, is it creates a MIDI output without creating noise. So you just receive or send MIDI notes. And I've sent it to port 10. I've put it into a piano roll so that it outputs this MIDI file. Well, it sends this MIDI file to where I want it to be sent, which is port 10. Now, on the mixer, I've got the sidechain linked, the sidechain MIDI output linked to this track here. And I've put the kickstart effect on it. What I've also done is I've got this white noise and I've routed it to this sidechain track. So basically anything that goes through the white noise track, the white noise mixer channel has to go through this channel before it goes to the master. So that means that any effects that are on th this sidechain track are also going to happen to this white noise one. So if I go on to the sidechain track and I click on kickstart where I've put the effect, what we need to do is we need to make sure that kickstart is receiving those MIDI notes. So we click on the settings here and then we want to go to settings, MIDI, input port. Now because the MIDI port I set was on 10, you can do anything up to 255 I think on this MIDI out. I've set it to 10 here, so it's sending to that one. And you close that down, and that means that these sidechain, these sidechain, these MIDI notes are being sent to kickstart. And so, next, what we want to do is we want to click settings, and first I'm going to show you one shot. The very basic one that I showed you at the start, that was synced, that when everything is synced to these four, to these four rhythms here, what I'm going to change it to first is one shot. Now what one shot means is that every time this, every time a MIDI signal is sent to the sidechain plugin, it will do the sidechaining effect, but only once. It will only sidechain once per every one MIDI sent, and it will reset for every MIDI. So it will sound like this. Now you can tell that's not a 4-4 rhythm, so, but it's still side-chaining at that point, and that is because I have the side-chain MIDI output telling this, the plugin, to side-chain when it comes in with the kick rhythm. Now obviously the mix dial still applies, and so do all these, but this means that the one bar the half note, the quarter note, and the eighth note are a bit different because that doesn't mean that it's side chains at this point anymore. What this actually affects is the speed at which the side chain automation happens. So if I play it at a quarter, you'll hear it sound like this. So the side chain actually comes in pretty quick in that 
you can hear that it's dipped when the kick comes in, but pretty soon after, the white noise volume is back up to its top. So if I put it up to one, you'll hear that it's a lot slower because this curve happens slower. It doesn't even have time to get back up to the top. If we put it to half, you'll hear it. And if you put it into eight, you'll hear that the side chain happens even faster. It's almost instantly back up at the top. So these eight, uh, quarter, half, and whole settings are the, then, with one shot, the speed at which the sidechain automation happens. Using one shot and retriggered is really helpful for when you are trying to find a complicated rhythm or you just don't want to sidechain to the certain 4-4 four -four pattern. You just want to mix it up a bit and have it follow a certain rhythm. So now, with the same setup, it works the same way. Click on settings. One, go here, retriggered options, and change it to retriggered. Now, what retriggered means is that it's almost the same as one shot. When a MIDI note is sent, it, that's when it starts the side chain, but it will keep side chaining until the next MIDI note is sent to it. So if I'm set to a quarter note, it will side chain once, and then it will start to side chain again as it would normally if a quarter note is here and then but because the midi note is interrupting it it starts again so you can hear it like this it dips here because that's where the midi note starts it dips again because that's when the quarter comes into place and it dips here because another midi note is being sent to it to tell it to start to side chain if we put it to eighth you'll be able to hear it even more Now, if I put it to a half note, you won't hear it because it dips here and it will follow up, but it will still be following this pattern, uh, but this will interrupt it before it finishes, so it starts again. So if you want to just place down one sidechain MIDI output to tell it to start sidechaining at that point, almost like a bypass, then retriggered is probably best. But if you want it to follow a certain rhythm just how you want it, then I would recommend that it's a lot easier to put it to one shot. So it only sidechains once from when you put in the MIDI note, which is how you get it to follow different rhythms. Now with side, with side chain, with retriggered and one shot, all of these curves still apply the same as the most basic way. You can still move it to suit how you want the side chain to work. And the same with the dial, it still affects how obvious the side chaining effect is in the mix. So basically, if you change it to synced, it just follows either a whole, a half, a quarter, or an eighth. If you want it to only come in when you have placed down MIDI notes, then you put it to one shot. And if you want it to start and start again when MIDI notes are placed, you put it to retriggered. If you want to just look at the setup again, I've got the MIDI output. You can use other MIDI outputs. You don't have to use a plugin. You could. I, notice, I know that FL Studio is a sample-based door, so it works a bit differently than others. With programs like Logic or Pro Tools, if you set down a MIDI track um, that has MIDI notes, but you don't, as you don't assign it to any VST, that particular track, then you can route that track on the mixer to another mixer port with the sidechain plugin almost like I have here. So it works basically the same, except with FL Studio, I've used a plugin to do it. So I hope this tutorial has been more helpful than the last one, because the, the last one wasn't really a tutorial. So um, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next one, I guess.